while you do have to be disciplined and yes, you have to be very strict and disciplined, but you, you need to, to understand that you're still a human and it's your first time and there's going to be mistakes most likely. And that's okay. Like forgive yourself, move on and keep going. Everybody. Welcome to episode 73 of the SupersetYourLife.com podcast. We have Lauren Hoover this time, another absolutely life-changing interview. You're going to love it. You're going to be inspired. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Thank you for listening. This is your weekly dose of entertainment, education, and inspiration to fuel your life inside and beyond the gym. A couple quick announcements before we get started. First one is if you are watching this on YouTube, great. If you are listening to this on a podcast platform, we do have a YouTube channel and most of our podcasts are on our YouTube platform so that you can watch them there. Um, Showing right now our deltoid desolator cable attachment. These suckers are back in stock. We invented these. These are our trademarked, patented, original skull cable attachments with silicone rubber handles so that you're hitting the rear deltoids, the lats, the triceps, the biceps, whatever muscle group you are targeting with a rope cable attachment, but these are extra long. So if you're one of the jerks in the gym like me that is taking two ropes at the same time, give somebody else a chance, let somebody else use one of those, go into the gym with an extra long rope attachment, you get better range of motion, you can hit the rear deltoids. We have training videos on how to use this thing on all kinds of different exercises. So check out our YouTube channel. That is Skullbells TV, S-K-U-L-L-B-E-L-L-Z. All one word, Skullbells TV. The gold is the most popular. It's probably the one that I'm most proud of, and uh, it's my personal favorite too. Okay, so that's our cable attachments. And then we have merchandise coming along the way. We have Skullbells merchandise already on our website. We have Metabolic Nutrition merchandise already on our website. Everything is at supersetyourlife.com. We also have gym bags on the way. So these will be here very, very soon. Like I said, if you're watching this right now, you can see me holding it up but it is our Skullbells logo. And this thing can be used as either a backpack or a duffel bag. (laughs) We did a poll on our Facebook group and on Instagram, and literally half the people said they preferred a duffel bag, and half of the people said that they preferred a backpack. And so my wife, Taylor, really came through with us in this one. She got a bunch of quotes, and we've narrowed it down to two different suppliers. We got samples from one, and we're getting the samples coming in very quickly from the other one and these double as either a backpack or a duffel bag. So I I love this thing, the one that I got in, and I've been taking it to the gym and testing it out, making sure that it's high quality, and absolutely love this thing. So that is the merchandise update. Also, we have t-shirts that are gonna be in very, very soon. I think they should be in any day now. Uh, The time of this recording is the 21st of January, 2022. So if you're listening to it a couple days after that, odds are it's probably in stock. So. Make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. Um, you can you can do that at supersetyourlife.com. Other than that, last thing is coaching. We are all filled up for January slots, as we mentioned in our last episode, but we do have a couple slots available for the month of February. If you are interested in coaching, if you want to lose muscle, excuse me, if you <laughs> lose muscle. No, if you want to build muscle and burn fat at the same time, whether it's on the carnivore diet, whether it's the keto diet, whether it's having carbs in your diet, whatever, we tend to be advocates of low carb because it really works the best for most people. That being said, some athletes really do perform better with a high carb diet. Uh, One size doesn't fit all work experience and everything, and so whatever's right for you, we're not gonna steal your favorite foods away from you. Uh, We want you to, to be able to build muscle and lose fat sustainably with a team that's a positive environment that's encouraging each other and we're all in this together. So if that is something that you are looking for is some accountability, some team camaraderie and some real results that are 100% guaranteed or your money back, go ahead and shoot me a text 206-743-1346. I would love to talk to you about what your goals are. All right, that's pretty much it. One more quick thing is our Facebook group. We have a free community Facebook group Uh, For people that aren't even clients, we have the exclusive group that is for clients only, and then we have a community group where we share success stories, we encourage each other, share resources that are specific to that group. So if if that is something that you would like to be a part of, you know, relationships have really taken a toll all across the world these last couple years with the pandemic. And so 
we're just trying to be those people that are spreading positivity and uh, keep a positive message going forward. All right. So if you would like access to that, you can go ahead and either text me or email me colt at supersetyourlife.com or text me again at 206-743-1346. And with that, we are headed into the interview with the wonderful Mrs. Lauren Hoover. Hello, everybody. Today, we have a very special guest on today's episode, Lauren Hoover. Lauren competed and totally crushed her first figure competition. She's a mom of three and over the last two years has gone through an incredible health and fitness journey. She's been an absolute inspiration to myself and we are so excited to have her on today's show. Welcome, Lauren. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. We're excited to have you. Okay, so quickly, tell us just um, a synopsis about your journey and everything that you've accomplished and kind of gone through the last few years. Oh, gosh. Um, So in 2019, I decided that it was time to get my act together. Um, I was extremely overweight and considered uh, severely obese. Um, I think like my final weigh in was like 230 pounds at five foot three. Um, And it just I tried um, going out for like life insurance and they came back at like quadruple what they had quoted me. Um, I was like a year uh, out from having my last child and I was 10 pounds heavier than when I had him. And it kind of just was like a, like a bitch slap of truth in the face. Like, Hey, Uh you need to get your stuff together. So um, over the last two and a half years, um, I just, been working out. I started like in my own garage, started building up a little garage gym and, um, and had like no real desire to do anything other than get fit at first. Um, and as I started working out, I kind of sparked this fire and this interest as I was like following people on Instagram and, Um, and I was kind of playing with ideas like, you know, CrossFit and powerlifting and where I wanted to fall in. And, um, eventually bodybuilding really hit for me and, um, I wanted to do my first show in 2020 and of course COVID shut down the whole entire world. (laughs) Um, so that didn't end up happening. And I just kind of still worked out in my garage, like casually, I still wasn't really, I had like one foot in, one foot out type situation. Um, And then last year in 21, at the beginning of the year, I said, you know what, that's it. Like, this is the year I'm going to do it. I've been saying I'm going to do it for, you know, a year now, a year and a half. And I put my money where my mouth is. And I got a coach like midway through the year and um, did about a 20 week prep. And then hit my first show in December. So that's awesome. You looked incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Your Thank you. Transformation still blows my mind. <laughs> yeah. I by the time I hit stage, I had lost a hundred pounds overall. That's amazing. Uh, so as your first time competing, what was your favorite part of just being on stage? Like if you had to pick one. Yeah, that so picking, I think picking one is like, I don't know if there's just one, um, but I think the one that stands out to the, me the most is the sense of accomplishment that I had mm-hmm. just from the moment I stepped on stage, like nobody else in that audience, those judges, anybody on stage really had any idea of like what I went through to get to where I was. And when I stepped on stage, I felt like finally, like I did this, I accomplished this. I belong here. I have such like a hard time with imposter syndrome. And I always, my thing is like myself, I am my own biggest, um, my own biggest hurdle yeah, or my own biggest critic. And I have such a hard time, um, sometimes getting over that and feeling like, like, yeah, you deserve to be here. You put in the work every single day and you're, you're kicking ass. So to step on that stage and finally feel like I did this was the most amazing feeling ever. Oh, I can't imagine. 
I'm sure you know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's during your, your weight loss journey and your competition prep, what were some of the struggles that you went through? Um, <clears throat> so there's a few things. Uh, a really big one of mine is... Um, is this imposter syndrome or this doubt, like this self-doubt. Um, I have a really bad problem of getting stuck in my own head a lot. And just feeling like just that, you know, I shouldn't be doing this or I'm too old to be doing it. Or, you know, I have three kids. This is crazy. Um, and just trying to get over that hurdle of, me against me Mm -hmm. and honestly like during this whole time and even now like I still struggle with that yeah but realizing that where I came from and how far I've gotten the only person really standing in my way was myself the entire time yeah um the second thing that I have a hard time with was is because I do have three kids, I do still work full time. Mm-hmm. Um, it was finding time. I really had to schedule out my days. Yeah. It was if I didn't have a plan, if I didn't set it, it wasn't going to happen. Mm-hmm. I had to make sure, okay, if I have to work out twice a day, because towards the end of prep, it, it got like that. I was working out in the morning for two and a half to three hours. And then I was doing another hour cardio session at night. So I had to schedule it out. I have to be up at 430. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to be back home by seven. I got to take my kid to school. I got to go to work, got to be off, cook dinner for the family, and then be back at the gym by eight, nine o'clock at night. Um, Finding that time was hard, um, but it really just came down to planning it. It just, it had to be planned. I had to put it on the calendar. I had to make it a priority. That was it. It's a long day. It is. It absolutely is. And it's like, you know, hard to find that, that time for downtime in between too. And it's like, okay, I got to sleep, you know, at least seven hours, if not more, if I can. Um, and making sure that I could still fit that in while fitting my family in too. Mm -hmm. And everybody will always tell you it's a selfish sport (laughs) and it does become that way. At one point I did feel like the last four weeks were very like, I'm sorry, like I'm here, but I'm not here type situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be gone a lot. And that's where my husband really stepped in, um, and was amazing because he would work out with me, you know, once a day, but that second time when I had to go work out again, um, he was the one that was, you know, stuck back here, getting the kids to bed, making sure, you know, that homework was done or the house is cleaned up and things like that. So that I could, I had that ability to go do that extra, you know, hour of cardio or whatever it was that I needed for the day. So. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. It's amazing how people say this is a selfish sport while you're putting your health first and then who you become through the end of it and the capacity that you have, you know, is more than what you ever thought you had because of the capacity that you built through that process. And meanwhile, the people accusing you of that or eating pizza and doing stuff that's uh, right up to their health. <laughs> so. And that's like the one thing I try and get people to understand too, is like, it's not selfish to put your health first, because if you're not healthy, um, both physically and mentally, and that's something that I've struggled with, you can't be there for other people. How do you expect to be there for your family, um, for your kids, you know, your, your husband, your wife, whatever it is. If, if you're not right mentally and physically, Mm -hmm. so it's not selfish to put your health first. It's really not. And you have to make at some point in your life, you have to make yourself a priority too. Yeah. And thanks for sharing that because I can totally relate to everything that you just said this morning. Taylor was at the gym for what, two hours. Right. Yeah. and And I was like, 
you know, the, the landlords were over and they were fixing the shower. And, and, and I'm just like, I haven't had a day off in weeks. And I really want tomorrow just to be a dad day, just spend time, you know, going to church and um, spending time with the family and everything. Um, and uh, something that's important to both of us, right? We, we, we really need this day. And uh, taking care of the kids and everything, wasn't able to get any of my work done. So hopefully I can still get it all done the rest of the day today. But I was like, Taylor needs to be at the gym right now. I'm not going to ask for her help, you know? So the last thing, because, because she needs that, she needs to be healthy. She needs to feel better. She's been crushing it like 60 pounds this last year and, uh, and just has a lot of positive momentum. So, um, that's where we really need to have each other's backs there. And, uh, for you and your husband too, and for him to be able to understand that, I'm just so glad to hear that. That's, that's, that's crucial, yeah. um, to, to have the support of your spouse. And when we have clients that compete, it's like, half of our attention is literally on making sure that their spouse is okay. Like that they understand everything that their spouse is going to go through that they know. Yeah. That they know that, you know, sometimes some days, especially that last peak week, like I, I, we called uh, Lawrence's girlfriend, Alicia, we're like, sorry, but your, your boyfriend's going to be a vegetable this last week. (laughs) I mean, like he's going to be alive, but like, uh, don't expect him to be in a good mood or like be super helpful around the house or anything like this boy needs to train. He needs to sleep and go to work. And if he does all that, great. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, that, yo, that last week is uh, just, I, I feel like the whole last month, like the last four weeks, because it's like really crunch time, but that last week is just so brutal. And you're right. It's like, don't expect them to be in a good mood. Don't expect them to want to like, cut. like you literally, I'm like, okay. Oh, all right. I have all this stuff to do. Nope. I'm literally going to take a nap right now because I just need rest. Like I can't do anything else. <laughs> um, I mean, not that I've been through it, but I've been through you many peak weeks. So <laughs> you've, seen, you've seen a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, it's super important to have that support too. Yeah. Whether. Well, if, if, I, if I may. Um, yeah. Okay. So your prep was 20 weeks long. Uh, mm-hmm. Where were you, where were you at, at the, at the start of your prep? I mean, obviously you didn't lose that hundred pounds in, in 20 weeks. So no. when, when, uh, did, when did you go, okay, here's where I am. And in 20 weeks, bam, I can hit that goal. I'm sure it was junior coach together figuring that out. So it it was really me pushing it on my coach. Um, my coach did ask me a few times to push my show out. Um, she wanted me to be the most ready that I could possibly be. And, um, even looking back and like at my photos, um, a few more weeks would have been really good for me. However, I, that was the last show of the year and I was so determined just to get on that stage. So, um, but when I went to my coach, um, I think my first weigh in with her, I was at 163. So she still wanted me to lose 40 pounds in those 20 weeks. Um, I got close, but I didn't get quite there. So that's why I say like a few more weeks would have done me some good. I could have leaned out, you know, another five pounds or so, and it would have been really good. But she wanted you, uh, one, she wanted you to lose 40 pounds. She wanted you to mm-hmm. 120. Yeah, yeah. She wanted me about the 125 range, 120, 125. That's that's so, like, that's that's super fast. Yeah. So, and that's why she she wasn't set on on my 20 week prep. She wanted it longer. Um, but I I there was nothing else until obviously like March, March of this next year. So um and that was it for me. Like that was the last show that I could pick and I'd made up my mind and I was doing it, you know, one way or the other. So, yeah. well, not even bit by the buck. So are you going to compete this year or are you taking a year off? Absolutely am. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> um, I actually have two shows planned this year. Oh. Um, one in July out here, um, like 15 minutes from my house. So nice. yeah, and that'll be good. And then one in August. So I'm going to do like a back to back. Um, it's like a six weeks in between, I think. No, not even five weeks in between. So it's going to be a long um, five weeks. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. And cool. So you're going to be in contest shape, like around June, July, when we're going to be in Florida. We, yes. We should get some YouTube content together. That would be really cool. I would yeah. enjoy that. Heck yeah. 
You have to make that work. Yep. Yeah, and my second my second show, I'm going to Vegas because I still have all, a lot of my family on the West Coast. Yeah, um, I'm sure they're all ready to see you too on stage. That'll be cool. Well, I also got my sister to agree to get involved this year, and so oh. um, the only way I could get her involved though is she wasn't going to do an NPC show with me. So, but she agreed to a WBFF show. Hmm. So. She's going to do that with me in August in Las Vegas. So well, I asked her the other day, I was like, you serious? You still want to do this, right? And she's like, yeah, I'm still going to do it. I was like, okay, because I'm not going to do that show if you're not going to be involved. Like, yeah. you're wearing like a, a, a gown and everything. It's like beauty pageant it's for a gown? fitness. Yes. Oh. What's yeah. It it's What's the federation? The WBFF. I'm looking it up right now. Interesting. Yeah. Fit and Firm magazine. That's a television station. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Very interesting. So they're more, so they're um, fitness, but they're also more on the, I would say almost beauty pageant side of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. World world beauty, fitness, and fashion. Uh Uh-huh. Kind of cool. I've never heard of that. Very cool. Wow. Do you like NPC? I do. I do like the NPC. I do. And actually, ultimately, and this is where the whole thing, like I get stuck in my head type situation, but ultimately my goal is to become IFBB. That's so cool. Oh, nice. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Paul's competing for his first time in NPC this year because he's always done WNBF. And so, okay. yeah, it'll be interesting. You get their big boys this year. Yeah, but I had my first NPC experience uh, coaching somebody through a show, and a lot of the competitors that we that we coached like the love the WNBF, but um, to to pat their uh, regulations for banned substances is like you can't have taken anything within the last seven years, and there's a polygraph test and a drug test and everything, and it's like most people that I train have taken something at some point, like yeah, it wasn't even really worth it, and then. You know, and the NPC does have natural shows too. And so, correct. So that's something that I'm, I'm like, great. Like me being a natural athlete, I can still, you know, um, do those ones. Be but competitive. yeah, I mean, like there's no, there's, there's no difference in the, in the culture or anything. It's like, if you go backstage, even the one that's non drug tested, it's like, it's nobody really talks about it. It's not that big of a deal. It's not, it's, it's not a, it's like people, like, like what people say it is, at least not from what I can see. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. You know what you're talking about, like the culture. And that was one thing that um, really surprised me. And what I loved, like being backstage behind the show, like off stage, is that um, I met a lot of really awesome freaking people um, Mm -hmm. at the show. And we started following each other on on Instagram and social media. And we're constantly commenting on each other's. you know, photos and videos and I'm being tagged in people's workouts. And it's like, you get that camaraderie and the, the people who are, because I don't have a lot of people here who do what I do or are trying to do what I do. I literally don't have anybody that I hang out with. Um, and so finding those people to kind of just push you and keep you going and, and, and encourage you um it was really cool to find that there and just just be able to continue to encourage each other and and I think some of those those people like the friendships I made were really awesome in the short period of time that you're back there you know it's one day yeah and people will bend over backwards for each other in this industry too like if you ever need a favor or like a recommendation or like a question about something it's like because you went, because somebody else knows what you went through and you were on stage together and you were there together. And like people, it's amazing how people remember that, but they forget who took what place. It's like, I don't even remember what place I got half the time or if I beat somebody else or if they beat me. It's just like, that's not what it's about. Like nobody really cares. But it, but like three years later, you still have that tight camaraderie like you're talking about. And if you need anything, if anybody needs anything from me, it's, it's just like, oh, that guy, love that guy, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, it's like I um I met a, a lady earlier in the morning 
um, when we were getting our hair and makeup done that day. And we we're sitting there and we we're all just talking about um, rice cakes, you know, yeah. <laughs> like of all things, rice cakes. And I was telling them, you know, how like I, I actually really enjoy rice cakes. I know they're just, you know, bland to most people, but I'm like, oh, just give me all the rice cakes, slap some peanut butter on there and I'm good to go. Oh, and yeah. um, later that night after the show was over, because it was such a long show, we were there till like eight or nine o'clock and the bikini women still hadn't gone on and she was oh, finished my. and she was like, hey, I brought you this. And she brought me an entire pack of the... Um, that apple cinnamon rice cakes yeah. <laughs> I was like I love you so much thank you oh well it's cool because like you guys all went through the same the same thing to get there and so I think that just kind of brings you all closer what kept you motivated on the days you didn't have motivation because I'm sure you went through those days yeah uh, yeah um so it's funny because <clears throat> I'm actually working towards my um personal training certificate right now. Hi. And so I was just reading about your, your extrinsic and intrinsic motivators. Right. Yeah. And, um, of course we all have that, like, we want to look better and, you know, we want to, you know, have that, that summer bod or whatever. Yeah. Um, but that does not keep you motivated at all. I mean, even money, um, I, you know, I do these eight week challenges and, it's the winner gets like $50,000. And even that doesn't keep people motivated. It really comes down to like finding inside of you why you're doing this. And it's not just like, for me, it's not just like, Oh, because I'm doing it for my family. Well, why are you doing that for your family? What is it? And, um, I had to really dig deep to figure out like why I was doing it why. And it ended up boiling down to, I want people to be proud of me. Mm -hmm. I want them to see me step on that stage and be like, she put in the work. She works so hard. And, you know, I, I'm like, my family can be proud of me. I can be proud of myself. And, um, that's what kept me going every single day. Like I would go in that gym when I didn't want to and say, I'm going to be proud of myself. They're going to be proud of me. I'm going to work hard. And I'm going to try and outwork other people. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's me against me. Yeah, so, sure. yeah, that's the coolest thing about the sport, I think, too, is that you're not going there to beat anybody. You're going there to beat your past self. Yep. Every time, like, Colt is on a prep, he always has a picture of what he looked like the last time he was on stage of, like, all over the house. I, but I also have pictures of other competitors that yeah. I want to beat, too. And even I have yeah. pros that, like, are kind of, you know, their physique is unattainable naturally for me to be able to get to. And I'm not willing to go to some of those extremes to, uh, you know, get quite that far. Men's and women's bodybuilding is quite a bit different. Like, for women to get into the IFBB, it's, like, awesome. Like, they still great for this and it's still a human but <laughs> the men, you know, like, <laughs> it's, like look like look like you know action figures or something like superheroes but um yeah no I, you know for, for me it's really wanting to beat somebody but in the back because it's motivating and it keeps me going and i'm like oh I'm, I'm not gonna cheat on my diet because i know that tim's gonna because i know that tim's on it i know that this guy's on it i know i know that hell my clients are on it but wanting to beat somebody i, I find it um, helpful, but in the back of your mind, of your, of your mind going, Hey, what's the big picture here? The big picture is to push yourself to the absolute extreme and see what you can really accomplish if you go all in with it. And leave no yeah. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. And that's the thing is like, um, <clears throat> going into these next shows, it's people are like, well, what's your goal? Like, what do you want to, why are you going to keep going? What do you want to do? And I'm like, my goal is to be one place better than I was the last time. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, um, I took like, um, fifth in, um, open C. And so my goal this time is to take fourth, you know, and the next time it'll be to take third. And it's just one step better every single time for me. And like you said, while there's other people that I look at and I'm like, Ooh, yes, I want to be, you know, like that, or I want to be better than that. Or like, 
that's all great and fine and dandy, but at the end of the day, it's, it's where can I go and how far can I push it and what's my next level? Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. So we have at least four new competitors this year, uh, going to be on their stage for the first time. What is one piece of advice that you would give to them, um, leading up to their first show? Um, I think, uh, something that I, I didn't have, and I wish I would have understood my first time a little bit better, um, was to really not be, while you have to be disciplined, don't be so hard on yourself and enjoy the, the process as much as you possibly can. Um, I, I think like I was so focused on, I had to be 100% perfect. And when I made a mistake, it was like the end of the world and that, you know, like, um, and I never felt ready. And like, you know, I kind of made it a little bit miserable for myself as I went. Um, and I didn't really get to fully, like I had moments of, you know, like I enjoyed it a lot, obviously, or else I still wouldn't be doing this. But until I stepped down on that stage, I didn't get to look back and really enjoy like the entire experience. Um, and so while you do have to be disciplined and yes, you have to be very strict and disciplined, but you, you need to, to understand that you're still a human and it's your first time and there's going to be mistakes most likely. And that's okay. Like forgive yourself, move on and keep going. Awesome. I love it. What what are some of those mistakes that, um, that you, that you may have have made, like, uh, was it uh, like a bad day of eating or missing a workout or yeah. Yeah. So I had both actually, um, you know, it would be like, um, for our anniversary, like I said, okay, I wasn't going to like go out and eat. And like, that was, that was that. And then my husband would be like, well, come on, can we just go to dinner? And then I went to dinner and I would like, felt so bad about it afterward. And then I had to realize like, why am I beating myself up? I made a mistake. It's over and done with. Get back up and keep going. Like, don't dwell on it. Stop beating yourself up. Just get back out there and, you know. And then, like, like I said, the schedule thing, that was really hard for me at first to try and figure out, you know. So if I missed a a workout in the morning, um, you know, I would I would again be really hard on myself. And instead of doing that, I had to plan, plan it out. I had to, okay, this is not working for me. I need to plan it where it does work for me. Where can I put this? Do I need to schedule other things around it? Like this has to fit into my life, you know, or else I can't do it. Yeah. Um, it can't be a secondary. So mm-hmm. find a place where it fits. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. So are you going to stick with figure or or do you you, um, have any aspirations to do like figure or the other direction and do like physics? I'm going to cross over this year. So um, I'm going to actually compete in figure um, and I'm going to compete in wellness. Oh. Yeah. So um, I actually like I still have like a lot of legs and lower body. So. Mm-hmm. Um, after my last well, competition, <laughs> yeah, after my competition, my husband was like, I really think you should do wellness. Like mm-hmm. you would do really well. And I was like, but I love figures so much, but I don't have as much upper body. So that's like one of my weaknesses that I really have to focus on this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's funny though, because I'm falling in love with posing. Um, Maybe and I've got like physique. <laughs> uh, well, and I've been watching people like um, Rachel Daniels, who just she moves so beautifully, and her posing is an art to her. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm like, not this year, but you know, maybe in a few years, maybe I go that way. I don't know. Yeah. So. Okay. Posing is cool. That's since, your favorite thing. Yeah. Since you said that you're gonna work on your upper body you're going to send you one of our cable attachments so that would be awesome yeah send us your shipping address and uh 
for the rear for the rear delts and for the triceps and for the biceps, it'll be the best damn cable attachment. <laughs> so um, let us know what color you want to and uh get that out to you on Monday. Okay, that would be great. That's exciting. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. My Our pleasure. Do you have any yeah, um, your posing was that, but done like mostly in classes, or did your did your coach help you with it, or do you, I'm sure you just yeah he would wing it like like a lot of no. <laughs> <laughs> That's worse than no. You know, what's funny is like the first month um, I was I was watching YouTube videos and I was just like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this on my own. Like, I don't want to step on that stage and look like I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, I was all in. And so I talked to my husband. I was like, I know this is, you know, a big expense for us, but I would really like to get a posing coach, too. I know on top of everything else. And he's like you know what, you're either in or you're out. So just do it. <laughs> like, wow. And so John um, is a man. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He's so supportive too. Um, but so I did, I did have a posing coach. Um, I wasn't able to find anybody in person unless I was going to travel to Orlando. Yeah. And with my schedule, you know, 45 minutes each way was going to be really wow. difficult. Yeah. So I ended up finding an online coach and um, we did five sessions and it was so great because she would um, video and she would take pictures every single session so that I could go back and watch it afterward. Yeah. And she would send me the photos and it was amazing just to see from the last time, which was probably only, you know, a week to two weeks in between sessions. Mm -hmm. how much changed and the little tweaks that she did here and there. And, you know, I thought after just the first session that I was looking pretty good. Yeah. And by the fifth session, it was just night and day. Yeah. Um, and between that and then practicing every time I was in the gym, I would come home and then I would practice at night. I would make my husband stand there and watch me. Ah. You know? I know how um, that is. But yeah. I would I stand in front of Fulton and in his little Speedo watching his, him do his routine and yeah. calling out the mandatory poses. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's really, it's honestly a team sport between you and like your your support person, your spouse, yeah, it's, whatever. It's, it's not the individual support that everybody thinks it is. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. You have to have that support behind you. Uh, you have to have that team. Like if I didn't have my husband who sat here and watched me pose countless times and, you know, supported me in my meal preps and would take care of the kids and put them to bed when I needed to go to the gym. If I didn't have my stepmom who on the weekends, you know, she would watch the littlest for us so that my husband and I could go work out together. Yeah. Um, you know, she took them that day too of the competition and then brought them later so that they didn't have to stay the entire day long, just yeah. sitting there. Um, I wouldn't have made it. There's no way I would have made it. Yeah. So but you have a really great support system around you. Absolutely. What, what drew you to figure more so than the other categories? Um, so I definitely love that V taper that figure gives. Um, I love upper body strength in women. Um, it's funny because like when I first started my fitness, I just wanted to be thin, right? Like I just wanted to lose weight. That was it. And as it progressed, like now I want to look strong. Like I want to look big. Like I want... I want biceps and I want chest muscles and I want yeah. lats. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, it work out. it's funny how it progresses. And so, um, but for vigor, I really like that V taper. I like those wide lats. I like those broad shoulders. Um, and so that just, that appealed to me more than, you know, bikini or, um, or physique or, or bodybuilding, but I am really starting to like physique now that I'm uh -huh. getting a little more into it. So <laughs> yeah. the posing, I think is my favorite part about the difference between like bikini and figure and then, um, physique and bodybuilding. 
I think mm-hmm. it is a really cool difference. And especially after watching Colt go through how many shows, like eight. eight. Yeah. And just like being there at every posing class with him and like his posing coach would like tell me things to look for so I could correct him. It's like kind of, it's like falling in love with like the art form of it all, which is really yeah, cool. She would so. be like, Taylor would be like next to the instructor the entire time watching what the instructor was saying to me and asking questions. And the instructor would, yeah, just, just like you said, just like, okay, make sure he gets his hamstrings in. Like you have to tell him if his glutes are engaged because he can't tell if they are. You need to be able to say these kind of things. So it was like, it was, it was like we had like a code thing too. So like say that I was number, I think I was number 16 at one of my shows. And so she would say like, if I was hitting a pose right, she would say like, nice quads, number 16, nice quads, number 16. But if I wasn't engaging my quads, it was, Colt, engage your quads. Colt, you know, it's like, <laughs> not just to look at the number. They don't know my name. So, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and that's helpful too that like, you had her there to watch and learn from your coach because, I mean, you can go back and you can pose in in the mirror as much as you want, but if you're continuing to do it the wrong way over and over again and you don't have that correction, like, you're not going to get better. It's not, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited to do the same thing with Taylor now, too. It's like, a, the, I'm excited to compete again, but I am 10 times more amped to, to flip goals and, and to go, okay, it's my turn to, to uh, help you do everything. They say, they say that you really do your, uh, your childhood through your kids, and that's just the same thing with coaching. Because like, <laughs> like, you know everything they're going through. So. I, I know. I love it. Like, I love um, – I love being able to see other people's progress and other people's journey. I love knowing that like I've helped motivate that in people. I love knowing that like I can, I can be there to kind of encourage them or give them advice on like what I've done and things like that. Um, But it's like their wins are like your wins, you know, like you feel it almost just as strongly as they do. And it just makes you so happy for them. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, okay, I got two more questions. What, one is, what's the what, if, if, you, if what's the biggest thing that was like a surprise? Like when you started your prep all the way up through your show, like whoa, I didn't realize that you have to do this. Like maybe it was like something about tanning or like peak week or like uh, what was just like the biggest unexpected hurdle or experience that you had through contest prep. Um. I think there are two things that hit me uh, a lot harder. Like I was expecting them, but I wasn't expecting them as hard as they hit. Um, A, the emotional side of things. Like when they tell you it gets rough and you're going to get emotional and there are some days where like you cannot control that. uh, I don't think you could ever be as prepared as, as you should be for the emotional roller coaster that you're going to go through. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the other part that really got me, um, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a food lover. I've always been a food lover. Um, clearly that's how I got to 230 pounds in the first place. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it was, uh, towards the end and that last month, like, just how much I would miss certain things, simple things like peanut butter, you know, because at one point my coach even cut that out for me because I still had a long way to go. It was, it was a hard and heavy prep. And I was like, I miss peanut butter of all things. Like who would have thought you would miss peanut butter? Um, And just like the small things that I took for granted, like rice cakes, (laughs) just like what? So, um, but yeah, I don't think, I don't think I could have ever been uh, prepared enough for the emotional roller coaster that I was going to go through yeah. and um and then missing certain foods. <laughs> and I know what to expect. So like when I get to that point, it should hopefully be a little bit easier for you on your next prep. Yes, yes. And and now like I kind of learned how to manage and control some of those. And so mm-hmm. I think as I go through more of them, it'll get easier. Yeah. And 
it really does become um, a matter of balancing your emotions and your mind and how well you can control that, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and I, so I, was diagnosed a, a few years ago with bipolar two disorder. So going through that, my family was really concerned, like what this was going to do to me. Um, and if anything, I feel like it just, it made me stronger emotionally. Uh-huh. And, um, and I'm, I'm still learning how to process through all of it and the emotions and stuff like that. But yeah, I do feel like as I go on, it's just going to get stronger and stronger. I'll get better and better. So. Yeah, um, that's amazing. That really caught me off guard. I had no idea that you were diagnosed with that. I mean, just like, you know, I don't know you as well as Taylor does, but this whole conversation, I mean, you're, you were the last person on earth. So I was expected. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, yeah, it was actually, um, I was only diagnosed um, in 2020. So it was really late in life. Um, I always had mental health issues. And it was always, um, you know, they always diagnosed it as depression. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I went through um, a lot of kind of self-sabotage and just like, I don't know, um, as as a young adult. And so getting a handle on that um and then starting this journey and my my health and fitness you know it was just it was really important for me mentally and i think it just has um has really just strengthened me in a lot of ways so wow did did having this goal of stepping on stage give you something to focus all that you know i've heard that people are bipolar like um they, they can tend to be extremely creative. Jocko Pistorius is my favorite bass player. Most most bass players say that he's the greatest bass player that's ever that's ever played. Um, and he and he was bipolar and, and he's one of the most you know creative musicians ever to live. Um, is that something that you found almost maybe even beneficial in some ways? And getting- it definitely is. It definitely is. Um, when you have um, so. I- I don't like to call them episodes, but um, we can be very creative and we can um, have a lot of energy at some points and being able to focus that on something um, really pushed me uh, a lot harder, I think. Um, And just being able to kind of get in the gym and if it was frustration, just let out the frustration. If it was anger, let out the anger. If it was depression, let out the depression, you know, and use that as fuel Mm -hmm. for those work outouts so. so cool yeah that's yeah. awesome well and not to downplay or make a joke of this at all by any means but i mean you were diagnosed in 2020 and like i could have probably been diagnosed <laughs> Taylor could <have> probably <laughs> yeah. it was a cool, i know it's a crazy year right i feel like i'm like can we just stop having these years already can we just, let's just move past this. Yeah. And are we done yet? It's 2022. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Last question. This is the theme of our show is life superset. All right. So as you know, a superset is when you did plenty of these on your prep. So you do one exercise and then you do another exercise that complements it, works the opposite muscle, and it makes you better at both exercises. Bench, go do chin ups, come back. You're stronger on bench, and and they, and they complement each other. Have you found working out and bodybuilding and even competing to be something that makes you better at other areas of life, like a life superset, like a like a better mom long term? Obviously, not right before your show, but like, <laughs> um, have you found it? To, have you found just the experience and what it did to you as a person um, to expand your capacity, your work, and uh, in other areas of life? Absolutely. And actually, um, this kind of crosses over into what we were just talking about. Um, But I have found that bodybuilding, because it requires you to be uh, strong mentally, you have to fight your own demons. That is something that has benefited me on the outside as well with my own emotions and my own struggles. Um, And I have learned to 
not necessarily control those emotions, um, but process through them and mm-hmm. not um, uh, overreact or react and rather just to uh, kind of let things happen and go with it. So that's been one thing that has definitely helped strengthen um, outside of the gym. And the other thing is um, I think my drive my drive to better myself. Um, As I started working out, I ended up going back to school again. Um, Like I said, now I'm working on getting my, um, my personal training certificate. And so trying to better myself in the gym has also tried, uh, also made me try and better myself outside of the gym. So I want to succeed in multiple areas of life. And so that's really, really helped with that. Awesome. That's so cool. Okay. Uh, we want to link you in our show notes, but where can people find you on Instagram? Yes. Um, mostly on Instagram. Um, I am, uh, Mrs. Dot Loren underscore Hoover on Instagram. Um, and that's probably where you'll find me the majority of the time. Um, so are you going to be recording your prep like you did last time? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So this one, uh, won't be as long. I'll probably start, um, the beginning of April. So, um, I'll only have, I'll only have about, you know, 15, 20 pounds to lose this time, thankfully. (laughs) So, um, Yeah. So, um, but I will definitely be recording and going through prep again, um, uh, on Instagram. So cool. Well, we are excited to watch that. All right. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy, busy schedule. I know that you're a busy professional, you're a mom, you got to start another prep and everything. And so, uh, we're grateful that you took the time out of today. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for having me. And um, I just hope that, you know, I can help somebody else uh, stay motivated and, and encourage them because I know it's I know it's difficult. And um, definitely on your first one, you feel like you, you shouldn't be doing it or you shouldn't be there. But um, you should absolutely 100 percent. So thank you. Well said. Cool. Well, I'm excited to meet you in person. Let's get together when we when we come to Florida. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Hey, podcast. Thanks a lot for listening to this entire interview with Lauren Hoover. This is one that really impacted us. And uh, yeah, other than that, if anybody has any questions with, um, with, with, your, with your workouts, with your training, feel free to shoot me a text. That number again is 206-743-1346. You can email me, colt at supersetyourlife.com. Merchandise, supplements, everything that we have is supersetyourlife.com. Love you a lot. Share this episode with a friend. Uh, Give us a rating and review if you would, please. That would mean the world to us. Love to hear what you think of the show. And uh, if you're not subscribed, please do that because we do have a new episode every single Saturday morning. Some weeks we just don't have time for it, but we always make it work because that's our commitment to you guys. We want to keep this positivity going forward. We want to keep this momentum going forward that we have right now. And uh, yeah, we're doing our part. If you could just pay it forward and share it with somebody, that would be a huge help. Thanks a lot. God bless. Have a good one.